I'm gonna tell you four things that completely destroy new YouTube channels. And we're starting right now. And look, if you're a new content creator, just as a heads up, one side of what I'm getting ready to share with you, if you do these things, it's gonna destroy your channel. But on the other side of it, if you take the information that I'm sharing with you and you do the right thing, then it'll actually help you grow faster here on YouTube. And the very first thing on our list is how you're thinking about YouTube. Now look, how you're thinking about it might not seem like a lot, but the way that you think about YouTube is actually going to determine the way you approach YouTube. So this is really important. For example, if you leave everything that you're doing on YouTube up to luck because you think to yourself things like, well, I'll start taking this a little bit more seriously once I start getting more activity and then, you know, if I get lucky with the video, then I'll start taking it more seriously, things like that. If you're saying those things to yourself, then you are completely leaving it up to luck. And when you're leaving it up to luck, that means that you are not going to do the things necessary in order to improve your luck, so to speak. In other words, instead of striving to improve, you're just going to sit there and hope things work out. And in most cases, when you sit there and you just hope things work out without taking action, trying to make them work out, in most cases, it doesn't work out. The next thing that will destroy new YouTube channels is not thinking about who it is that you're trying to reach with your content. Let me give you an example. If I were to put you in a 1,000 acre forest and I were to show you a photo of a target and I said, hey, hit this target, it's in this forest, you wouldn't know which way to point. You wouldn't know how far it is. You wouldn't know if you're right on top of it. You wouldn't know if it's right over the next ridge or whatever, because you don't know where it is that you're actually trying to hit that target. You're, you would essentially just be shooting your arrows up into the air without any clear direction, without any clear intention on where it is that you're trying to get that arrow to go. And you would be hoping that it would come down on a target. And unless you got really, really, really lucky, it would not come down on a target ever, regardless of how many arrows you shot into the air. But on the other side of that, if I was like, hey, here is your bows and arrows. Here is your target that you're trying to hit. It's like 20 feet away. You've got, you know, a lot of chances to hit this. As a matter of fact, I'll just keep bringing you arrows until you do. Then in that case, there's a really, really good chance you're gonna hit that target because you know what it is, you know where it's at, and you know exactly what it is that you're trying to do, which is get that arrow to that target, which is just right over there. And look, I know I'm not the best at analogies, but let's keep moving. But that same idea applies to our video content as well. For example, if you know who it is that you're trying to reach with your content, then you can craft your titles, you can craft your thumbnails, you can craft the topics of your videos and even how you're putting your videos together in a way that's going to most deeply resonate with that core audience that you're trying to reach. For example, if you're trying to reach people that are into basketball, then in that particular case, you would make sure the topics have something to do with basketball or the players. You'd wanna make sure that your thumbnails have imagery related to basketball in them so that they would be easily identifiable to somebody that is interested in basketball to where they would be able to see that it has something to do with basketball at a glance. And in the videos themselves, of course, because you'd be talking about basketball in those videos themselves, then you would be talking about all the nuances within basketball. In addition to that, as you start bringing more people into your channel from those videos that are about basketball and they uncover on your YouTube channel that, hey, this person has even more videos about basketball and YouTube's recommending them more of your videos about basketball, guess what? Those people are going to keep coming back because they are into basketball and you've made it super clear that your channel and what it is that you do is about basketball. And as a quick side note that applies to everything not just basketball so if you're doing gaming content this applies if you're doing beauty content this applies if you're doing motivational content this applies if you're teaching people stuff this applies it applies across the board. Understanding your intended audience is a huge part of the game here on YouTube. So just make sure that you are spending some time thinking through who is it that I'm trying to reach with the content that I'm putting out there? Who is it that I'm trying to connect with through this content? And start taking notes, right? Who's the ideal viewer for your YouTube channel? What type of themes or topics do you have around your YouTube channel that's going to add value to those people that you're trying to reach? Also think about where those people hang out on the internet so you can participate with them in those places where they hang out on the internet. In some cases, you'll be able to share your videos with them and others you won't, but you'll be able to get a deeper understanding of those people, plus connect with like-minded folks who are into the same things you are that you're making content about. But in a nutshell, the more deeply you understand your audience, the easier it's going to be for you to connect with them. So remember that when you're putting your content together. The next item on our list that destroys new YouTube channels, all YouTube channels, I would say, is not working on your skills when it comes to the skills required for content creation. I've made tons of videos on my YouTube YouTube channel. I've made videos on other YouTube channels. I make videos for sponsors. I make videos for collaborations, all that stuff. I've made a ton of videos, but I'm still always trying to get better at some part of the process. So as you are going through this journey, 
always try to improve and think to yourself, what could I do better in this video that I didn't do in my last video? Every single time that you're watching your videos and you're looking in your audience retention reports and you're seeing how people are responding to what it is that you're doing, make sure that you're just considering that and you're thinking to yourself, this is how people responded to this video. What can I do in this video that might help them respond a little bit better? What skills did I apply to this video that I need to work on on this video because it didn't necessarily land as well as it should have? Constantly try to get better and not just at making video content either. Try to get better at copywriting so that you can make better titles and you can look for videos and you can Google around for copywriting tips. Try to get better at your thumbnails. You can watch videos on graphic design. You can watch videos on photography. You can even watch videos on advertising so that you can start to get an understanding of what actually makes a good thumbnail as well. Spend the extra time needed to learn your editing software the best way you can so you can make sure that you're putting together good workflows that you'll be able to use for a long time to come. Work on your audio. Oh, okay, you get it. Like just, just work on all the stuff and make sure that you're constantly trying to get better. And one thing that I do want to mention really quick when it comes to editing software, and this video isn't sponsored by them or anything like that, but if you are somebody that's looking for an easy to use piece of video editing software, Camtasia is a great place to get started because you can screen record with it and you can edit your videos with it. So I do encourage you to check out Camtasia. I'll put a link to them down in the description. But if you are looking for something that's easy, it's a great place to start if you're just getting started. The next thing you can do to completely destroy a new YouTube channel and keep yourself stuck down here in the bottom without making any progress whatsoever is not to have a theme for your YouTube channel. It's also called a niche or a niche, depending on how it is that you want to say it, but we're just going to call it a theme so we don't have to fight over which way is the right way to say it. But here's the thing when it comes to themes. We're all human. We're all multi-passionate. We are all into a bunch of different things. That's why we have different hobbies. That's why we read different types of books and we do all these different types of things because we're, in, we're human. We're into a bunch of different stuff. And some people want to take all of those interests and they want to put them on one YouTube channel and they'll say things like, well, I'm the niche. And look, that's cool, be the niche, but you might wanna Google around a little bit and see how much people are looking for you. And if you find that there's not a ton of people looking for you, but you do wanna have a large YouTube channel, then in that particular case, it's really advantageous to make sure that you do put a theme together for your channel so that you can introduce people to you so that people will be looking for you in the future. So then later on down the road, you might be able to pivot. And look, with all that on the side, here's the reason that you wanna make sure that you do have a theme for your YouTube channel. Because the way that YouTube works is is when you are publishing content and people come in and they start responding to that content, then YouTube is going to show them other content of yours because they think that that particular viewer is a good fit for your content if they come in and they enjoy it. The problem happens or everything breaks down, I should say, when you publish a video about your vacation and you have some people come in and they're like, hey, this was a cool vacation, I dig this. And then you make another video about this app that you installed on your phone. Well, right there, just in that next video, why do the people that enjoyed your vacation video care about that app video? And we can do that in reverse. The people that came in from that app video because they thought the app might be interesting or the app might help them in some way, why would they care about your vacation video if YouTube suggests that to them or if they go to your channel page or your videos page on your channel page and they're looking through your content, looking for something else to watch. And you can navigate within this. Like if you know who it is that you're trying to reach with your content, like I mentioned earlier, then in that case, you can just run it through the filter of, hey, even though this might be a little bit outside of what it is that I normally do, is there a way that I can kind of frame this and make it relevant to the people that are coming in for the theme of my channel? If the answer is yes, then in that case, you can still publish that video, no big deal, you're still doing the right thing because you're framing it in a way that still makes it interesting to them. Before we move on, I wanna make something just crystal clear here. So if you are somebody that is uploading content and you're just like, hey, I'm just putting some stuff up here for my friends and family to watch, I'm not trying to grow a big channel, I'm not trying to get tons and tons of views, things like that, then in that particular case, you can do whatever you want. It's not a big deal. And everything that I'm saying right here doesn't even technically apply to you because you're not actually trying to grow the channel. But if you're somebody that's like, yeah, I want to get a decent amount of consistent views on my channel. I want to grow my channel over time. I want to have a decent community that I can publish content that they can enjoy on a regular basis and all that. And in that case, it's really important that you get the ball rolling by having that theme for your channel. And then like I mentioned before, you can of course pivot later or test 
pivoting if you want to. And just to highlight what I'm saying here from YouTube's perspective, I wanna share with you a screenshot. In this screenshot from the creator tips section of the YouTube help pages, they say the recommendation system, which is the system that shows your videos to people on home pages, suggested videos and other places on YouTube, recommends videos by factoring in what videos the viewer has enjoyed in the past. That way the system can surface videos the viewer is most likely to enjoy. What videos are often watched together? The system may then identify videos viewers are likely to watch but haven't been exposed to yet. To put some emphasis on this one, just like it said in the graphic, when people are watching videos together, then YouTube detects that people are watching videos together and therefore are likely to show some of those other videos and the originating videos to other people who use YouTube in a similar way. So when you have a consistent theme across your channel, then what happens then is it's more likely that people are going to watch videos back to back on your channel and therefore help YouTube with this process, which will also help YouTube find the right viewers for your content, which will then in turn help you grow faster. They also say to determine this, that they look at how much of a channel or a topic a user watches. That way, the system can identify what content to recommend to the viewers. Again, this is where having a theme for your channel really comes in to help you out big time because then, as people just keep coming back to your channel on a regular basis and they keep enjoying the topics that you're talking about or making content about, then what's going to happen is YouTube's just using that information on how viewers are interacting with your content in order to find new users that might also enjoy your content as well, as long as you keep serving people in the way that keeps them watching more of your content and coming back to your channel. And here's another thing that some of you are probably thinking. Well, I watched this other channel and on this other channel, they talk about all of these other topics. It's this big YouTube channel. They've got, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of subscribers on their channel. They talk about all these random or seemingly random things. It might seem like it's seemingly random from the outside, but in reality, what's really happening is those content creators, they know who it is that they're making content for and they're targeting that content to towards a specific type of viewer. It might be a more broad audience type of viewer, but they still have it narrowed down to the type of people that enjoy their content. They've also narrowed it down to the type of content that they put out on their channels that people respond to at a higher rate than others. And that also helps them fine tune things in order to make the channel a better resource for the type of content that that type of viewer consumes. Another place having a theme or a niche or a niche really comes into play is long-term sustainability with your YouTube channel. If you're just making a bunch of random stuff, you might have some videos pop and you probably will if you're making good content. But the problem happens when it's not consistent in terms of you're not putting out content that's going to continually bring viewers back over time, or you just start really diluting who it is that you're making content for and you don't really have a clear audience for everything that you're putting out. But anyway, if you come up with a theme for your channel and you start making content around that theme, then it's just going to make YouTube a lot easier for you, at least when you're getting started. And then once you get going, you start having an audience come in that's where you start putting out some content to where you start dipping your toes in the thing about, let me just try making this type of content and see if people are here for the content or if they're here for me. And in a lot of cases, you're gonna find out that they're there for the content, but in some cases, it is to where people are there for the creators. So when you do have a channel like that, then in that particular case, I don't know why I'm doing this and I'm just kind of pointing off the screen right over here. I don't even know why, I'm just gonna... Get a theme together and you'll make YouTube a lot easier on yourself. And another thing, if you have a new YouTube channel and you're trying to get your first 1,000 subscribers on it, click into this video right here. It's gonna help you get there faster. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.